92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5, and we'll soon have audio and video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Dakota's here this morning. How are you? Doing pretty good. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. All right. Also in the studio, Brian Johnson, Fulton County Community Foundation, part of the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Tom. It's morning. Pretty, it's a pretty day out there. It is. Did you walk over? I did. It, it was a little bit brisk towards the end of my walk with the wind blowing <laughs> on me, but a nice, nice fall day. 34 so. degrees right now. 34 degrees. Well, it's not freezing, I guess. No. Nope. So. Moved up a little bit it's, from that. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a nice day, it looks like. So. It is indeed. Well, we've got a few things going on at the foundation. We well, um, always do. Right now, we do. Um, although I, I should probably use air quotes and say this may be one of our slower times right now, but we're getting ready to, <laughs> for a bunch of things going right. on. Um, just a couple of reminders. Um, Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Um, that is open to um, women in our community. Um, that group provides grants um, for community needs. Um, the 2019 membership dues are due um, by December 31st. So if you have members that um, have not paid um, that would like to continue with that group, um, I'd encourage you to get your check in or um, can make that gift online. Um, it's $120 annually or $10 a month. Um, and if you are interested in that group and have not been a part of that and would like to find out more, don't hesitate to give us a holler or look on our website. We have some okay. information about that group on there as well. So They do a lot of good things. Do a lot of good. Yes, um, since it's since it started, that group has granted over $40,000 really? to community needs. Wow. And it's it's neat because no member has paid more than $120 every year to, to make that happen. So um, neat to see that. So kind of building off of the success of this, this is the second year we've um, hosted a group that we're calling the Girls Giving Gang. It's similar to the Women's Giving Circle. Um, this year we're going to have our second um, social for that group. It's going to be next Tuesday, October 30th at 6 p.m. at the library. This is a group for girls 18 and under. Um, the Community Foundation is providing $2,000 for the girls to give out that evening to community projects. And the way that's going to happen is that as, as um, attendees are coming in, they'll be able to suggest organizations to receive grants. And then our members from that group will vote on which organization should receive funding. Um, we'll have four organizations receiving $500 each that night. So membership for that group is $12 per year, a dollar a month, kind of similar to the Women's Giving Circle. Okay. Um, if girls are already paid members of that group, they can vote, or if they want to join that evening and bring $12 to um, join the group that evening, then they can also vote. So anybody can nominate, but the members are the ones that will be able to vote on which organizations receive those grants. So I'd encourage girls, like I said, 18 and under, if, if you're interested in that, um, moms and grandmothers are welcome. Sure to attend as well. Um, we'll have a couple of fun activities that we'll be a part of too that evening, but um, learn a little bit about some things in our community that evening. So, Excellent idea. Uh, again, that's next Tuesday, October 30th at 6 p.m. at the Rochester Library. So, um, We're already getting questions about scholarships. Right. I wanted to let everybody know that our application will be available on December 1st of this year. Um, on our website, nicf.org, um, and you'll be able to find that information. Um, the application due date will be um, the first week of March, so students will have some time to be able to look at that and get required information, but um, we've already started getting questions about that, so wanted to let everybody know that our plan is to have that available to start filling in on December 1st, so um, keep an eye on our website for that. So, well... That kind of covers our current events. Wanted to talk a little bit about this is we've kind of been doing a series of history of 25, 25 years, years sure. of the foundation. Sure. So, of course, we were started. Um, the official start month was October of 1993. So we're 25 years old now. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have cake and punch or anything, but we did have an open house and um, to celebrate some of those things. So we kind of wanted to take a snap shot of some of the things that 
have happened over the past 25 okay. years. Look that. back to maybe some of the things we've talked about um, and some of the things that we've been able to be a part of. So, of course, 93, we were founded. Um, 1994, we received the first gift creating a fund. And can I ask you the trivia? Do you remember which fund that is? That was the uh, Baxter. Very good. Yes, you get, thank you. You get bonus points for today. I think that's the final <laughs> Jeopardy question. Either that that's, or shows I'm old. I don't know which, but that was the Baxter Shows fund. you're paying attention. Right. So, yes. Um, the Baxter family created that in 94. In 1996, we were able to award our first grants. In 1997, we were able to award her for scholarships. Um, 1998, we were able to award the first Lilly um, Community Scholarship. Um, jumping ahead a few years, 2010, the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle was formed that we just mentioned. Um, 2012, we awarded our first impact grants from okay. our community funds, um, significant grants there. Um, 2016, we made a change and opened up our grant cycle so we can get grant applications throughout the year. Um, in our most recent thing, 2018, we purchased the new building that you mentioned earlier, um, 227 East 9th Street um, here in Rochester. So it's, it's kind of interesting as we look at some of those things, um, the history of how things have developed. So looking at some numbers, um, since 93, when we were founded, we've provided over $2.1 million in scholarships to area students. That doesn't include the Lilly Scholarship numbers. Um, over $3 million in Lilly Scholarships to Fulton County say, residents. There's got to be a bunch there. It's, there's a lot there. Right. Um, we've helped 129 preschoolers at some point in their preschool career through the Preschool Scholarship Program. And... Um, We've granted nearly $11 million in grants. Now, that doesn't include any of the scholarship numbers that I mentioned. So over $15 million wow. in our community since we've since inception. And it, it's kind of neat to see. It's a big number. It is a big number. Yeah. So, um, and then just looking at some of the things that we've been able to do, um, you look around the community and things like the Compassionate Health Center been able to help support that. Um, the Times Theater is one that's right. coming up. Um, the foundation was involved with helping with some things with the Blackett or Sports Complex as that was created. Little Leagues throughout the community, Akron, um, Rochester, Kiwana, Fulton. Um, some of those neat things that are, that are happening in our community. So um, it's, it's exciting as we look back and see um, what's going on and, what, and where we've been and where we are now. Um, Looking at the numbers, um, we're over sixteen and a half million dollars, pretty close to seventeen million in assets right now. And the neat thing about that is, as we look back, you mentioned the Baxter Inc. Fund. The gift that the Baxter family gave is still working for our community today, twenty-four years later. And in the next twenty-five years, it'll be working to help us make grants um, in the community. So, well, I think the great thing about the foundation. And people who think about it know that it just keeps adding on to itself. It just keeps, it it, you know, it is bound to perpetually grow. Yeah, and that's and that's really um, what is an endowment. I, I assume that people know that, but I always like right. to explain that. So basically what an endowment is, is monies are given to the foundation. We invest those, and then those earnings are what are used to make those grants. So... The neat thing about that is that even though the mon there's grants made every year, the initial gift isn't spent, and it's still here working for our community. So the two guys that are sitting here in 25 <laughs> years having this conversation, if it's not us, will be saying, hey, you know what? 50 years ago, the Baxters gave a gift. Right. And, it'll and it'll all still people, be you, by the way. It, it may be. It may be. So... Um, but it's it's neat to see how that happens and then able to address community needs. Right. So there was no way that 15 years ago we could have foreseen something like the Compassionate Health Center coming right. around. But when that happened, we had funds that were able to support that immediately instead of them having to go out and fundraise for it. And, and so that's that's the beauty of having these um, community funds around. So, well, And we wanted to talk about something exciting. We didn't know this the last time when we talked about community funds, but um, 
for some of our listeners or viewers may have heard that Lilly Endowment has announced another round of matching funds. Excellent. So Lilly started actually in 1990 um, with what a program they called GIFT. So Give Indiana Funds for Tomorrow. And they went through a progression of about five programs that helped community foundations get started, build endowments, educate the community about what an endowment can do, and then also continue to that point of being sustainable. Okay. And, and it's exciting to see that the Northern Indiana Community Foundation is at that point now where we're self-sustainable. And so Lily said, well, you know what? This has been success. We've gone through these five phases. We're probably not going to have future matching money. And then a few years ago, more recent memory, um, they surprised everybody and said, oh, by the way, we're going to start Gift 6. It was a matching program. Um, and that matched for our community funds. If you're an accountant, you probably would use the word unrestricted funds. Okay. But basically, those are funds that are given to us with no restriction. Donors say, we want you to use these for current needs in the community. And so, um, Gift Lily Gift 6 was a success. Thank you to everybody who helped participate in that. Um, it was kind of interesting looking back at the numbers, the growth in our community funds. These are just community funds, what we're able to award out. Um, really, prior to Gift 6, we were able to award about $72,000 on average in community grants every year. Um, 2016, which was the first year that some of those gifts started making an impact, we had $136,000 to award. 2017, we had $179,000 to award. Good. This year, 2018, we have over $195,000 to award. So you can see the success of the fact we were able to raise a million dollars in new community fund endowments to help make grants. And so the exciting thing is Lily just, just announced... Um, gift seven. Okay. So very similar to gift six. They said, hey, this was such a success. We want to be able to help you guys do this again. Um, some of the details are not yet available. So um, we're in the process of, of making our application for the program. But what we can say at this point is that um, Lilly Endowment will match all gifts to community funds or unrestricted funds on a two for one basis. Yeah, not just one not for one. Not just one for one. Right. This is we we get a double our bang for That's the good. buck. So yeah. my quick math wizardry, I'd like to say I was able to do this in my <laughs> head, but um, so community funds are set up by donors um, to sometimes it's in memory of someone, um, maybe it's a family fund, things like that. Um, to keep somebody's name um, relevant and alive in our community and really um, celebrate those those individuals or groups. So um, we have right now, we have 22 different community funds. Um, all of those are eligible for matches on a on a two-for-one basis. So if, a, if somebody's listening out there and they say, hey, I'd like to do this, I sure. don't have the funds to start my own fund, but I really want to... Um, contribute to this. We have a list on our website. Folks can find um, the funds that are eligible for a two-for-one match. And then um, the other option is if somebody says, hey, I'd like, I think I'd like to talk about maybe setting up a named fund. So here's where my crack math skills come in. <laughs> I had to use my calculator. On a two-for-one match, if somebody says, hey, I want to create a named fund, maybe a family fund or in memory of somebody or in honor of somebody, with a two-for-one match, our, our minimum size for a new endowment is $5,000. So with a two-for-one match, if somebody gives us $1,666.67, got to get real exact there, <laughs> they can create a new named community fund. And that's something that um, goes on forever. Sure. Um, it's it's something where all these funds are pooled to make grants in our community. When we start talking about grant applications, things like our impact grants. So this year we were able to award an impact grant to the Times Theater Group. Um, that, that grant came from those community funds. Um, we also have community support grants. So things like um, the soccer complex where they were able to purchase a new mower. Um, things like the Kiwana Fall Festival that happened um, last month. Grants like that, community support grants, came from our community 
um, funds. And then also the pop-up grants that we've been able to award throughout the year have come from those funds. Um, we've also been able to support the preschool project, um, different needs as they arise in our community. So those community funds really are, are wonderful in the fact that they are so responsive to what um, our current needs are. Exactly. And with the fact that we've actually opened that grant cycle so that, that organizations can apply whenever they need to, um, that's made it even better. So it, it's really an, an exciting time for this. Um, more details as, uh, to follow. More already. details to follow. It'll probably be, we're guessing, middle of November, okay. or late November, before we know really all of the details. Um, but we wanted to to let folks know about that, especially this time of year with end of year giving. Donors Hopefully, are, by Giving Tuesday, we'll know. Giving all the Tuesday. Details. Well, we, we can we can say we have a two for one match. There you go on Giving Tuesday. But that's that was another thing that I had on my list. We're gonna okay. um, be having Giving Tuesday, um, of course. That's always, you have Black Friday. Right. You have Small Business Saturday. Then you have, um, is it Cyber Monday? Cyber Monday. I think is the official. Right. So then um, there's been a push in in the world of philanthropy for Giving Tuesday. That's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. So this year it's going to be November 27th. Okay. Um, Kind of the kickoff to the holiday giving season. We we often have people come into our office and say, you know what, I'm trying to find a gift for somebody, and they already have everything that they need, and right. they said, I don't want more stuff. So um, one thing that folks can do is make a gift to a fund in honor of somebody sure. um, as a Christmas gift, and um, you can feel good about it, that you're helping the community. The person that it's in honor of feels good about it because they don't have more stuff that they have to figure out what to do with. <laughs> And also, again, all gifts to the foundation are tax deductible. So it's, it's a win-win-win in that case. Um, and then with our match, of course, you don't have to wait till Giving Tuesday to benefit from the two-for-one. Right. But um, we will have some special things going on that day. Um, I think we're going to kick off the, the event with the radio program. Sure, um, we'll Start at about 9.30 and go till about 6 that evening. Um, we'll have have lunch over the lunch hour, some food for the supper hour, okay. um, food throughout the day. So if you can't make it at one of those times, you won't leave hungry. That's the, <laughs> the promise I can make. Um, and then we'll have some information, kind of a, a year in review information about okay. what we've done. If folks are curious about what is going on, um, just kind of a good time to, to find out. If you haven't been in our new building, I'd encourage folks sure. to, to stop by and, and see our new facility. So it'll be a, we're, we're looking forward to Giving Tuesday. So it okay. um, will be an exciting time for some of the things we've got going on. How do we get a hold of you, Brian? Well, folks are curious about anything we talked about, or if you're interested in finding more about um, the Lily match that's going on, um, they can always check us out online, nicf.org. Um, you can like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We try and keep information about things that are going on on there. Um, give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street. We'd love to talk to you about anything that's going on or if you have questions or ideas for our community. Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation. And Brian, as always, we appreciate your time this morning and the report, and we appreciate everything you guys do for Fulton well, County. We have a good community. You do a good job. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Tom.